YouTube! Welcome aboard once again with the Furry Biker, aka Stormer 65. I hope everybody is good, well, and keeping very, very good and happy out there and during this festive period in the run up to Christmas. As you can see, it's been a mixture of wet and shit weather. <laughs> so, yeah, I like to start out as I always do. Big shout out to my subscribers, new and old. To the old guy, to the old guys and girls, thank you so much for being on board with me for all this time. And to the new guys, welcome aboard. I really appreciate you guys watching. You know, fucking hell. Red light jumper and suicidal pedestrians. Oh man. So anyway, as I was saying, thank you very much for subscribing and staying on board with me. It's an absolute privilege to have you people with me. So tonight's vlog is about the wonderful world of the 125. See, a lot. some people would say that the 50 is the first real tentative gateway into the world of motorcycling. I beg to differ. For me, it's the 125, because, at least with the 125, you're not holding every fucker up all the time. And that is how you be a sneaky bastard. <laughs> anyway, that's what I say. About the 125, you don't hold everyone up for a start, so you're not in the way like if you're on a 50cc hairdryer. It's 30 mile an hour in it, mate, and you're now we can go up to 40. Impatient. So, yeah, you're not holding everybody up. It's a great introduction really, you know, give you a first taste of two wheel freedom in my books. Just the right size, see whether you like it or not. There's no good going out buying, doing your direct access and buying a big motorcycle and then finding out I don't like it. At least for 125 you can get some experience in your belt and get out there, learn the ropes a bit. They do teach you a lot about, you know, having eyes up your fucking ass, Which is one of the biggest things you will be doing if you decide to join the motorcycling fraternity. So, I hear you ask what kind of 125s are out there? Well, it's not a case of one cap fits all, there is all sorts out there. You have Super Sport 125s, like the Aprilia RS, the GSXR 125, the CBR 125R, you know, if you like your classic Super Sport 125s, you've got your two strokes like your Aprilia RS 125, the Honda NSR 125, Suzuki RGV 125, Gamma, oh man. That was one of my dream bikes when I was sick, when I was 17. <laughs> the RGVs. Walking quick but rare as bastard in seat these days. To find in good condition anyway. If you like your cruisers, Suzuki do the Marauder. That's the GZ. Um, Yamaha, Honda will do one as well, I believe. You, you do it all, like the art, like the Suzuki Van Van, which actually doesn't come into any particular bracket, to be honest. It's a bit of a hybrid, a bit of a strange one for me, that is the Van Van. But, if you prefer your older 125s, your older four strokes, you've got the Suzuki GS, the Honda CG, the Honda the Suzuki GN by Come On. All great bikes to get you out there, to teach you your craft and that. 
And I can guarantee at a motorcycle training school, DCBT, you will most probably be riding a CG S, a Honda CG, a Yamaha SR, a Yamaha YBR, or if you're lucky like me, a Suzuki GN. Which I say I'm lucky because it's the bike I'm riding now. Well, this isn't actually the bike of the CBT on, but you know what I mean, you lovely people. The other good points about 125s, you know, is a good, good on fuel economy, good for spare spare parts, quite cheap and easy to come by for them. Insurance is always good for them, and I'm paying, I think it's about two about 200 pound fully comp, and I'm on my CBT. 200 pounds fully comprehensive. <laughs> Which isn't bad, really. 125s, you can come across them quite easily. Quite cheap to buy. Cheap on Rotax as well. About £18, £17, £19, £18 for 12 months. There are a few pitfalls with them. Like there's loads of Chinese ones out there. They're not as good as a decent Japanese one. Though some might argue with me on that one. <laughs> also, if you get yourself into trouble, you don't have much power there to get yourself out of trouble. Which is one of the biggest bugbears of a lot of 125 owners. Fuck you, gun. And another thing I noticed about 125s, especially little misty here she doesn't like hills <laughs> one two fives are not meant for hills well big steep hills they can go up them you just got to time your gearing time your shifts time this that and the other and uh, yeah those are the main disadvantages I can think of you know. So yeah, if you pass your test on a 125 and you decide I'm going to go on the motorway, bear in mind that these bikes can hit and attain and sustain motorway speeds, you know 70-75 mile an hour, but they're not really recommended for motorway riding in my books purely because your engine will be screaming at you like fucking mad and then you get those who say you can't you know they're not designed for long distances um well yes and no it depends really on what you do with the long distance for touring i.e. long distance touring say over several continents I wouldn't recommend it though people have done it and I applaud them for doing it. I myself wouldn't do that. I'd be inclined to get a bigger bike to do that. But, either way, I have done long distances on this 125, on this little, little GN that's underneath me. And, you know, we've got to in sustained speeds, 70, 75 easy as anything and she stayed there so it's possible it's doable so yeah in a nutshell that's one two fives i am looking to upgrade do my direct access next year to get me full category a license but i will still use a one two five for commuting to and from work and have my bigger bike for weekends you know, that'd be like my play thing. <laughs> so yeah, throw me a like, a comment, subscribe if you like what you've seen and heard. And I will see you again on my next vlog. Hope to see you all again soon. Take it easy. Fellow bikers, keep your rubber side down. And for now, farewell. <laughs>